This is Jordan Tao with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe, and let's get right into the news. All right, so we got Jay-Z. Let's tell this story real quick. Oskino goes on Vlad and tells a great story about beloved Jay-Z and how ruthless he is, okay? Now, state property was basically signed to Rockefeller. Was, was P.D. Crack directly signed to Rockefeller? That's unclear. He might have just been under the state property umbrella. Um, but there was a time where Jay-Z spent a lot of his time around state property, using state property. So did, so did Dame Dash, using all of them. They were the hottest thing going at the moment. P.D. Crack was a star at that time. It still is very good. Now, at this time, Oskino said that he was in studio and he was doing his own thing, so he didn't need extras or anything. But PD Crack went to Jay Z and said, You know, I'm very sorry to ask you this, but is it possible that I could get enough money to get like a, a beater car, something for like two or three grand, you know, something to get around so you can get to studio and get stuff done and, you know, get extra stuff done for, for uh, doing stuff. And Jay-Z said, you finished? And he said, yeah. He said, no. Now, at this time, Eskino made the point that Jay-Z had so many cars that the cops had to come in 4040 one time and let him know that one of his Mercedes were stolen. He didn't even realize it was stolen. And they had recovered it. It had been missing for like a week or two. And this just shows who Jay-Z's character is. You know, he only does philanthropy when it's seen to the public. There's been many instances where I've seen Dame Dash help people's careers, especially at Rockefeller, with no benefit. Nori helped Nori. Even helped Cameron in the beginning and, and didn't expect a monetary return until, you know, Cameron decided to sign to Rockefeller then because he helped them get out of a Sony deal. But that, there was not terms attached to that, that he came to Rockefeller. They, they kind of worked that out. Actually, that was part of the demise of Rockefeller to, altogether because as far as Dame Dash and Jay-Z's relationship. Uh, Jay-Z did not want Cameron on Rockefeller, obviously, you know, because at that that's where the shift happened. How do I know that's where the shift happened? Well, I was in, I, I think I was in high school going into college, and at this time I started, like, I, I took my, uh, the, the camcorder stuff I had, and I, you know, like, I had a camcorder, right? So I pretended to be MTV to do the behind the scenes of the old boy video. And I remember being at the old boy video and doing the behind the scenes, pretending I worked for MTV, but I was really getting footage to sell to this other network, right? Um, so anyways, I'm in there and I, I actually approached Jay-Z after this photo shoot with like Lyrico. I guess they were announcing, you know, Dame, uh, Dame Dash and uh, Cameron signing Rockefeller and Jay-Z, all that, you know? So I went up to Jay-Z because I'm just young and <laughs> not to lose. And I said, hey, uh, can I interview you sometime for this show? Uh, you know, could I get your, your manager's number? And he said he gave me his number at the office. And I was like, so you don't have a manager? He's like, no, I'm, nobody's my manager. <laughs> this was in like 03, 02, 03. And I was like, oh, okay. But you could see in the room that Jay-Z stayed to his side, Dame stayed to his side with camera on them and I was like yeah this seems a little weird you would think everyone's all together like they are on TV you know now, that was the beginning of me my journey but uh yeah anyways then we got you know that Jay-Z's obviously not the most you know he's not the greatest person he even has that story talking to his uh he's like my uh my cousin came to me and said can you borrow five thousand dollars and gonna turn it to two million and I said it doesn't work like that buddy you know, like he just shut him down <laughs> instead of saying, if you need five grand to start a business, we could work out some paperwork, you know, just make, give me a business plan. He just doesn't work like that, buddy. He said this on Kevin Hart show. Look it up. Well, uh, Meg the Stallion, she uh, is releasing part two to her album. Why are they doing this? Well, her sales were trash. She only sold fifty to 60000 the first week, and that's after millions upon millions of marketing dollars. They didn't break even. 
So they got to keep, they got to try to repackage the same stuff with a few more songs to try to boost interest in this album. It's kind of sad because, listen, my point is, is without a machine sometimes, you're, you're toast. She has a machine behind her now. Take that machine away and she's not selling anything. You could see that with YG. Um, you could see that with Big Sean. When the machine's not behind you, the machine wasn't behind Big Sean. The Def Jam didn't even help. And he only sold like, I think he sold like 20,000. People aren't selling. If you don't have a label behind you to boost up the looks, sometimes you don't sell. Like, it's really like the market really shows itself without those marketing dollars, you know? Glorilla samples wipe me down. If she does not put Boosie on a feature on this, I didn't see her say anything about putting Boosie on it. If she doesn't put Boosie on this, this will be a big misstep. She re she redid Wipe Me Down the same way Boosie uh, said it to uh, B O O S I. Yeah, you know, she spells everything up. You better put Boosie on the feature. Otherwise, <laughs> it's just going to look corny. It's going to look like a clout chase. Now, they do have songs together. They do have a history together as far as working together. So I assume she'll do the right thing. And lastly, Billy McFarlane wants to replace Ja Rule 50 Cent for Fire Festival 2. Yeah, keep dreaming, buddy. That would never happen. And you shouldn't even be doing Fire Festival 2. Fire Festival 1 was a crime. You went to jail for it. That went to jail for that and defrauding investors. Dude, I can't believe they're even letting this guy attempt a fire festival too for 2025. Anyways, it's Jordan Tao with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. I'll check you guys on the next one. Peace.